Hey, this is Jim, and I am back with you with another Sports Stream Spotlight. This time, we asked Jesse Miller from Midtown Video to join us to talk about some of the sports production projects he's been working on. You may have seen one of the case studies that we're going to talk about right now are uh, brought up in the VizRT segment with Austin, talking about Florida International University. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the work that Jesse and Midtown Video did with them and some other interesting stuff that he's been working on. Hey, Jesse, how are you, man? I'm doing great, Jim. Thanks for having me. How are you? Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, can you take a moment and introduce yourself and Midtown Video to our audience today? Sure. I'm Jesse Miller. Midtown Video in Miami, Florida is a global provider of audiovisual and broadcast services. A lot of our a lot of our experience is here in Miami and South Florida, but we get out to the Caribbean, New York to California. We're focused on bringing our clients audiovisual systems that they can use with confidence. That's great. And Jesse, I mentioned that we're going to be talking about a case study that did come up already on a segment that we did with VizRT. And you've actually joined us on some of our NDI November events. So I know you're using a lot of this production technology. So today I really wanted to talk about how that production technology is being used in sports and some of the different ways that sports production is unique, different, and in a lot of cases, very special compared to a traditional live production, right? Sure. So... The main focus at the FIU job was to stop dragging their production equipment from venue to venue. So what we did to centralize their control room was we built their TriCaster and 3Play, their main audio console and the rest of the gear into a control room in the basketball arena. Then they had their you know, facilities and IT teams run single mode fiber from the control room in the broadcast facility at the basketball stadium to their baseball stadium, to their football stadium, to tennis, to soccer. So now all they really had to move around were the cameras and they could centralize, like I mentioned, their TriCaster TC1, their 3Play 3P1 and do switching, streaming. This is all going to ESPN Plus uh, okay. without having to disturb the racked equipment. Something else that was kind of cool specifically with respect to NDI, is that they've been having two uh, parallel TriCasters at the football stadium, one to stream out to ESPN and then one to run the, the show on the Jumbotron, but they weren't really sharing sources, let's say. And so as we came in with this focus on NDI, you know, on ex extending the networks over fiber, we were able to not just improve their ESPN streaming, but also now the Jumbotron, the, the in-show the in-venue show benefited from all of the broadcast cameras and the broadcast show benefited from all the marketing cameras, the wireless cameras roaming the stands and stuff like that. And I think fan engagement is equally as important in the venue as the broadcast that does go out to ESPN Plus, right? A hundred percent. You know, you in television, the rule is it's got to be better than being there. So right. if there's fan engagement and you're watching the stream, you want to be able to experience that. And if you're cut off from the in-show, you're, you're missing an element. Absolutely. And I know sometimes even in venue, um, the audience now has become so used to what the broadcast teams offer with the stats that come up, the instant replay capability happening instantaneously, that when you're in the venue itself, you will see a big play happen and everyone turns their eyes to focus on the scoreboard to see what's happening next. So you said you're driving a lot of that with both the TriCaster and the three play, right? That's right. You know, the in in venue show, particularly at FIU, had I think only three cameras. Now they've got seven to choose from, not just for the Jumbotron, but also for their replay system, for their three play, which, you know, it, it enhances the experience for everybody. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that we're seeing, too, is that in addition to meeting the in-venue experience, the broadcast experience, there are a lot of other needs between social media and post-production and bringing your fans in to becoming part of the school in this situation, the sports team or whatever we're talking about. What are some of the other big trends that you're seeing in the sports production industry? 
Well, um, official replay is really important now. And a big shout out to Gene Byron over at FIU. This man has 12 cameras on his official replay system. I think it's the wow. he's the top producer in Conference USA for for official replay. And that's you know when done right, when incorporated through NDI and shared across the network. Now the in-game experience has even what the officials are looking at. You know, to uh, watch the toes touch or not touch the line backwards and forwards for the fans in the stadium and, of course, on television. So, uh, you know, the, the focus on official replay in not just football, but basketball and all the sports really is, has been pretty cool. Also, you know, ESPN Plus really brought to uh, the the at-home viewer some of the sports that are that are less popular. So people are watching volleyball games, you know, the the teams like soccer that don't get as much airtime typically, you know, NCAA basketball and and football are juggernauts, but with sports production becoming so available and this so this paradigm of the centralized control room allowing you to easily broadcast from any venue, now these other sports are getting even more attention, swimming and diving, for example. Absolutely. And it's not just the other sports. It's uh, lower division programs. It's independent conferences, independent schools. You're starting to see the production world and the equipment available at these affordable price points really kind of democratize that content that even if there is a highlight at a local high school game that isn't broadcasting to ESPN+, Plus. By having that footage available, they can get that up to the ESPN highlight show later on that evening very quickly and very easily. Totally. Yeah. And the better the production value, the more uh, willing your yep. your local news elements are to, to re-air stuff like that on their sports segments. Totally. Awesome. Jesse, when I reached out to you to talk about some of the stuff that you're doing in the sports production space, another case study that you introduced me to was the Doral Academy and some of the stuff that you've done there. And I think our audience will find this really interesting as well. Let's go into this one a little bit. Cool. One of Midtown Video's main pushes is venue sound. Sometimes we'll show up and people are like, Midtown Video, we didn't even know you did sound. <laughs> but uh, as you see here, this is a, a point source system. We put in some badass Stanley speakers. And the idea is, you know, one thing is to win the game, right? But you've also got to beat your other teams in swag, right? Swagger, excuse me. So when you practice, you want your rivals to hear it in their stadiums. And that's what we're aiming for in this kind of sound system. So you can see the breadth of the of the athletic field on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you can see the mass of the subwoofers and the Danley speakers that we're putting up on these light poles. It It's beautiful to behold. I mean, during practice, the coaches want to pump up the, the, the players. During games, you want to pump up your crowd. You know, at the slow times when the ball's not moving and we're waiting for the next play to develop, there's a DJ, you know, there are presentations so that uh, in-game, in-venue experience gets even better for the fans. So just like we're doing a centralized control room and allowing the cameras to move around from venue to venue to broadcast any sport, similarly, we're putting big-ass speakers in the basketball arena, right? where sometimes that doubles as a cafeteria auditorium. Then we're putting them out in the football stadium so that you know the, the football fans on Friday Night Lights can hear the boom as well. But sure. you've got to have centralized control there. You've got to have one amplifier rack. We want these systems to be unified so that you know one day the school administrators say, hey, I'd love to have the same audio content pumping to both soccer, you know, both athletic fields. And you got to be able to say, yeah, we could do that, you know? Absolutely. And there's a couple of things to unwrap here. You know, one of the key things that I love that you focused on with this is that audio capability. Audio is such an important part of the overall production that when Jesse is talking about this in-venue experience and he's talking about the speeches that are installed and bringing the fan participation into the event itself, that is done much more easily with audio than even the biggest LED display wall that you could be pumping the video onto, right? That's true, that's true. You know, uh, it, with respect to a digital meeting like this, they say, if the video's glitchy for a little bit, the people can handle it. But the minute the sound fails, people tune out. 
Um, a great example, I don't know if any of you guys watched the University of Michigan defending national champion football team play their first game this past Saturday. Uh, but if you did, you might have noticed that the announcer indicated like two or three times in the first quarter how we didn't hear the wireless microphone of the referee. But finally, by the second or third quarter, you know, he was able to turn it on. We were able to hear what the referee was calling so much that the broadcaster commented again, oh, they finally got referee, you know, so-and-so's microphone working. So uh, that's an example of how the in-game experience and the broadcast experience are so reliant, not just on technology, but on the collaboration of the, uh, it's often two different teams doing it, at least at the college level, right? So uh, at FIU, one of the major accomplishments was for the first time ever, because we implemented the system, because we extended the network, because we're using Dante and NDI, the referee's wireless microphone, which was always heard, in the speakers at the stadium now is heard on the conference USA, the ESPN plus broadcast. So uh, yeah, the, the critical nature of audio cannot be overestimated. Absolutely. And in all fairness, the only reason the referees mic wouldn't work in a university of Michigan game was probably because they were using the same channel to get the plays from the opposing sideline. Uh, the green know, dot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jim, for, for throwing that one in there. I'll take it. I can take it. Uh, we only um, beat everybody last year, right? Uh, you know what? We can save this conversation for another time, for okay. sure. Um, but yeah, I, when it comes to the audio being part of the production, whether it's in the venue itself, whether it's out to the broadcast, you know, one of the guests that we had join us on Sportstream is LiveView. And I'm sure LiveView is going to talk a lot about how their technology prioritizes audio and then locks in the rock solid video stream with both of them working side by side. And I know you've had a lot of experience with some of that live view technology as well, Terry, right? They do an incredible job on uh, on codecs, on compression. You know, they're pushing, it, it looks like wired video, you know, and it's yep. like, what, six megabits a second. It's I know. very cool stuff. I didn't, I didn't know that they're, uh, prioritizing audio in there but yes it, it makes perfect sense you know they have that audio return channel also the the ifb yep. to put in the in the talent of the ear so they can in the ear of the talent so they can hear what's going on from the control room it, solid absolutely. system yeah no absolutely it is and and it's great because now you can take one of their encoders on the sideline from anywhere and to create that broadcast quality stream for whatever the production is working on so it's definitely a great tool that we point to time and time again. So, Jesse, when we are talking to the people who are tuned in to watch SportsStream and they're looking to get involved in the video and the audio and the live production from their stadiums across the country, uh, when, when are they reaching out to Midtown Video in that process? That's a great question. There, there are like two main times. One, when the budget is announced. You know, some colleges do it June 1st, some July 1st, but when they get the new budget for the next year, that's when they start looking on how they can augment their existing facilities. I need a new camera. Uh, I need to update my old replay system. On the other hand, it is typically like at the end of a sports season that we hear them begin planning for the next season if it's going to be a major overhaul, right? You need... Uh, you need a segment, a significant amount of downtime if you're going to install something like giant speakers around a stadium. So you want to make sure that you've got, you know, these these venues double, not just as sports stadiums, but the athletic facilities are having all kinds of events, you know, pep rallies, uh, this graduation often the soccer, ceremonies, all that you. stuff, right? Yep. Thank you. So yeah. so that schedule coordination often has to be done a year in advance. So it's at the conclusion of a of a season that they start thinking about what are we going to do after the end of next season. The sure. planning really is critical. So, um, yeah, there, there there are basically two ways that we look at it. Are you looking to augment your existing system? If so, that's right when the budget is renewed. And then, are you looking to make a major investment in your sports facility? And if so, that's got to be done almost a year in advance. The the planning of it. And that's one of the things that becomes very important in working with a system integrator with the experience like Midtown Video is obviously you can call up any reseller anywhere and they're going to help you spend your money and they're going to help you spend your budget. Where the experience and the consultation comes in is inspecting out the project itself. 
How much of a timeline do you need to get this stuff installed properly? What kind of access do you have to give to the crews to be able to get those huge, heavy speakers mounted properly without affecting other events that happen throughout the year? These are all things that can be done very easily. And I'm sure, Jesse, you and your team answered these questions almost right off the top of your head a lot of the times, right? It's a, it's a benefit to have a lot of experience to bring to bear in these situations. One of our crowning achievements was when ESPN launched the ACC network and the University of Miami had to upgrade from doing digital internet broadcasts to linear television broadcasts. And Midtown Video was honored to be the integrator that brought them you know, from digital to linear broadcast capabilities. And the, the planning, the, that entire experience was like rocketed us to a new level of of capabilities and uh you know just the the amount of learning in that scenario that we're able to bring to bear as we build control rooms for other schools continues to pay dividends in 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 terms of the uh understanding of the process and uh investment in preparation and planning yeah absolutely and you can start the process by going to jesse's website at midtownvideo.com. You can reach out to them by email, by phone. Uh, the entire team at Midtown Video is great. They're happy to help answer any questions and help you spec out your next project. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us here on SportsStream. Thanks for having me, Jim. It was super fun. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day.